One reporter for a left-leaning magazine seems to think that giving cash to tenants instead of Section 8 vouchers will lead to better outcomes. But will it? I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of a very left-leaning, progressive-type magazine, and they seem to think that they have the solution to the whole problem with Section 8, right? They think that if they give cash, just straight cash to tenants instead of Section 8 vouchers, well, that will solve the problem. That will make it so that they'll be able to get the housing they want, that landlords won't you know, decide not to participate in the program, and that everything will be rainbows and butterflies. Well, that's just not true, okay? And the reason that they don't just give cash to tenants is for a very good reason, okay? They won't spend it on rent or they'll pocket the extra, or they will you know, just do anything except for pay their bills with that money. Instead, it will just become a cash grab for a bunch of lazy, good-for-nothing people, right? At least with the Section 8 program, you're guaranteeing that the money that's being used, that's being allocated, is going towards housing and not towards gambling, not towards lottery tickets, not towards cigarettes, not towards drugs, not towards big screen TVs, not towards the car payment, but just towards housing, okay? Housing is what they claim all these people need, yet at the same time, they're like, oh, let's just give them cash. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think these people suddenly are going to be able to, you know, just pay their bills on time and handle all their issues? No, okay? There's going to be huge huge amounts of not just people who are screwing the program up, but fraud. There's going to be fraudsters out there trying to get those checks just so that they can, you know, uh, spend it on something else. Okay. And that that's awful. That's absolutely awful. It's a horrible idea. It will not work. Yeah. There's a lot of problems with the section eight program, but we need to make sure that the money is being used for housing and that the money is actually getting to the landlords. That's what's important. Not trying to make sure that the very few people who are having difficulty with the program are uh, able to get housed. That, that's ridiculous, okay? You're talking about trying to help maybe 1% of the people who have Section 8 vouchers who are having difficulty finding housing, and you help that 1%, but then you uh, completely screw up you know, 30 to 40% of people who are going to be just you know, uh, not paying their bills on time, and we're going to be spending their money on other things, etc. Okay, so you make it worse overall. So God, you know, th th it seems like they come up with this same dumb idea all the time. I I don't, you know, like I, I've I've covered at least one or two other articles in the past that were talking about the exact same topic, but it just keeps coming up, and you know, it it, it will be a failed experiment. It will be. And how do I know this? Because they had an eviction moratorium going on back in 2020. And then they passed out a bunch of stimulus checks to these tenants who supposedly had lost their jobs. Now, did the tenants actually spend the money to pay their landlords? Some did, but a huge, huge number did not, okay? And landlords were left hanging. We were just left there without any money. So what do you think? Before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you think giving cash directly to tenants, <laughs> instead of you know using going through the whole voucher program, do you think this is a good idea or do you think this is a bad idea? I just want to know your opinions. You know, I, I can't say that I represent every landlord on here. Maybe some landlords think this will work out better. I know that the tenants on here who watch might think that this works out better, but just let me know what you think down in the comments below. And let's get into the article. This article is coming from Vox.com, and it says, A bold new federal experiment in giving renters cash. Would money help tenants more than housing vouchers? Right? And they go over a little bit about the author of the article here. I'll read that little bit here. It says, Rachel M. Cohen is a senior reporter for Vox covering social policy. She focuses on housing, schools, labor, criminal justice, and abortion rights, and has been reporting on these issues for more than a decade. You know, I, I wonder how many houses she actually owns, how many rental properties she owns. I don't think she probably owns any. So I always think it's funny that people think, oh, you know what, the, the policy solution, I'm gonna create, a, I'm gonna write about social policy. 
and they have zero experience whatsoever in that field. And don't tell me, oh, well, I've got the experience as a tenant. Well, as a tenant, you don't even have half of the information necessary to know what it takes to provide housing. Okay, but anyway, let's get into this article. A group of researchers at the Department of Housing and Urban Development have been quietly developing an idea that could fundamentally upend the nearly 50-year-old housing voucher program, which helps more than 2 million low-income families afford apartments in the private rental market every year. The idea is relatively simple. What if, instead of traditional housing vouchers laden with convoluted red tape that landlords notoriously hate, low-income tenants could pay their rent with cash? Would that make it easier for tenants to find housing or move into better neighborhoods? Could that even save the government money by streamlining the aid? Right now, due to funding constraints, only a quarter of those eligible for housing choice vouchers, formerly known as Section 8 vouchers, ever receive one. But if you are in that lucky 25% and are awarded a voucher, you might not be able to use it. The program is so cumbersome that only 60% of beneficiaries can find a landlord willing to rent to them. You know, like they, they sit here and they say, oh, you know what? This, this will work. This will work this time. This time it'll be different than the last time. The last time they handed out all of the uh, stimulus money and, you know, they were passing out, you know, they have multiple stimulus checks. They had expanded unemployment benefits and they thought, okay, you know what? The people are going to use this money to pay their bills. And they did not. They did not in a lot of cases. Now, some did. I'm not going to say that every tenant out there didn't uh, use that money in order to pay their landlords, right? But there were a huge percentage who didn't. And that's a problem right there. When you give people cash and you put no strings on it whatsoever, you make it as easy as possible for them to use, well, there is going to be a lot of people who do not use it for the intended purpose. Like, here, this money is for food. Here's here's a thousand dollars. Go buy food, right? And you're like, I got a thousand dollars. Well, maybe I'll spend five hundred dollars on food and then spend the other five hundred dollars on liquor and cigarettes. Huh? I mean, you know, I mean, think about that for a minute. So will this actually help or will this be another one of these government programs that is rife with fraud? And that's that's the thing, you know, like when they went through, they you know, there was so much fraud. There was so much fraud from all of the stuff that happened a few years ago. So we have a great example right there of what happens when we put these socialist government programs in place. We end up with a ton of lazy people who aren't going back to work on purpose so they can get their expanded unemployment benefits. We end up with a bunch of people who got, you know, a lot of stimulus money and stimulus checks that didn't use that money to pay their bills. We end up with, uh, people who are creating fake businesses so that they can collect, you know, PPP loans. I mean, this is what happens when they're passing out money. Did they really think that it was going to end absolutely perfectly? No, absolutely not. Okay. Now there were people who were helped by these programs, but remember this money isn't free. It's not truly free. There's no such thing as free money. So every single penny that we give out we have to pay for ourselves through our taxes and w w every time people sit there and they're like why are my taxes so high why you know and it's not just uh people like me who own uh you know who make higher income and own properties right every time you go down there and you're paying sales tax every time you try to uh you know renew your license on your vehicle you're paying taxes you're paying a lot of money and those those things are going to keep going up and up and up and things are going to become less affordable because you thought to yourself, oh, well, uh, I'm going to cheat the system. and I'm going to take this money or I'm going to, you know, take what I don't need. You know, like we just can't keep giving money away. People need to work and earn money. They do not need handouts. OK, this stuff does not work. We've seen it not work. And yet they keep trying to re-implement the same dumb programs. But let me continue with the article because I'm ranting. The f this isn't the first time the federal government has explored questions around cash assistance. In the early 70s, Congress successfully piloted a program to 14,000 families across 12 states. That research, however, was largely forgotten about in the following decades. It wasn't until recently when some HUD employees stumbled upon old reports 
buried on an agency bookshelf, that policymakers realized the cash rental assistance model might be more valuable for modern times. They are building on that older research as well as more recent developments. An ongoing related study in Philadelphia, the COVID-19 experiments with new kinds of cash assistance, uh, including not just housing aid, but also stimulus checks, child tax credits, and food subsidies, and dozens of encouraging guaranteed uh, income pilots that have cropped up o all over the last few years. HUD officials now say it's time to give federal cash aid a closer look. So they, they looked at the COVID-19 pandemic and they thought that was successful. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? We're sitting here in a world of rampant inflation, you know, like where everything, everything costs a lot more than it used to just a few years ago. And they seem to think that, oh, well, that was a success. That was a resounding failure, a resounding failure. And they can't even see it. This, the cash assistance program, like I just said, was horrible, you know, just rife with fraud. It did not work. It might have helped some people, right? But the real question is, is it sustainable long term? And we saw, we saw with our very own eyes what happens when we try to implement this sort of program long term, right? <laughs> it would destroy this country, destroy it. Because we would end up in a situation where we have more people who are accepting government aid than we have working. Okay, that's not what we want. That's not what we need. And you know, when we're, especially when we have millions of people flooding over the border from foreign countries coming just for this sort of government aid, knowing that the government will take care of them. That's a bad, bad idea. But I'm not going to go through this whole article. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below so that you can read it for yourself. But just know that they're sitting there. They're trying to you know, bring up this old, horrible idea once again.